share a scripture from Second Corinthians. This is the, the final part in a teaching on this, the two species of man. And again, send in all your questions. Feel free to send them in on the chat window. Uh, we also will be uh, allowing call-ins tonight if you'd like. You can call the cell phone number, which is 330-621-8667. But don't call until the questions part. Don't call early, in other words. If, if you do, I'll have to turn you off. I'd have to turn the volume down or something. Anyway, but uh, feel free to send in your questions in the chat window also, and we'd love to have everybody here. Uh, we're, gonna, we're still talking about the two species of man, and this is a fascinating, incredible subject. Uh, definitely from the Lord on all this teaching. Uh, I've had confirmation over and over again. Uh, verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new species. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So uh, some translations say a new creation. So God has made a new creation in Christ. The children of Christ are, are far... Uh, more blessed, uh, blessed in the spirit, or blessed with the power of God, than the uh, the ones that are serving themselves and serving the dark side and doing their own thing and all that. Uh, it's up to us, up to all of us, to uh, uh, surrender to God so that we can be part of that new species. If if you're if you're not surrendered to God, well, then you're still the old species, and the old species has very little power, and they're constantly driven by fear and worry. And if you want to be free from all that, then just surrender to God and start feeding on that. Start feeding on the good, the clean, the pure, the powerful, and the positive, which is the Word of God. And God will bless you. It's an awesome thing to be able to be part partner uh, or part of the kingdom of God, and to be a partner with God in a sense. Uh, we are children, basically. The Bible says over and over, now we are the sons of God. The, if you think about it from Adam's fall onward, they've been looking forward to a better time. And when Jesus came, he was able to set up that kingdom. And, and these scriptures were able to come to pass for the first time. In the Old Testament, they, they were servants of God. They weren't sons of God. Uh, and, that's, and the only people that had the Holy Spirit were the, the prophets and the priests. Uh, the average person didn't have the Holy Spirit to guide them and direct them and help them and do miracles with them. And now the Holy Spirit has come upon all of us who surrender to God. And so now, and now we're sons of God. And we have a we have God living inside of us and on us and in us. And we read in Luke in past uh, lessons. If you haven't seen the other five lessons, uh, please uh, make it a point to watch them because it's excellent teaching. And. Uh, uh, yeah, so we read in Luke how we were endued, imbued, excuse me, imbued, endued, empowered, and clothed with power from on high. The last, one of the last things Jesus said in Luke. So I'm getting somebody texting me, but I'm not really sure who it is, so I can't find him. But anyway, uh, I'm just trying to see if there's maybe... Brother Lidke, if you're listening, maybe you could send me a, a chat if everything's going good, everything's here and good, and, uh, and also how many viewers we got. Anyway, God bless everybody, and like I say, get your questions ready. We're, we're going to share just a little bit more in the same page. If you're in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, it talks, verse 18 and 19 tells how we've been given a ministry of reconciliation. In other words, bringing together man and God again. God and man are intended to be friends, close friends, one in agreement, working together in harmony. Uh, that's what God intends, and that's what that says in verse 18, verse 19, putting us two back together in harmony, in oneness. Uh, I want to read chapter 4 and verse 4 also. And a lot of people are in this situation. It talks about the God of this world who's blinded the minds of the unbelievers that the glorious good news about the Christ, who is the image of God, should not shine through. So the God of this world is small g, and it's not talking about God, because the big g there later, when it says the image of God, about the Christ, who is the image of God, should not shine through. The God of this world is, is the devil in his kingdom. Basically, he's got a power here. Uh, he offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, and Jesus didn't say, You're not, you don't own those. Uh, he said, he said, get away from me, Satan. Uh, you know, I worship only God. I'll worship only God. Uh, so there's a number of scriptures that tell us that Satan has a great strong control on this, on this planet. And 
But we, the good news is we have victory over him. We're as a oneness with God. As soon as the children of God start working together, in other words, we're waiting on the children of God. God's waiting on the children of God to start cooperating. As soon as we start cooperating in a, in a decent number, you know, 1% or one-tenth of 1%, somewhere in there, we can start setting everything straight on this planet. And it's up to us to start working together. And God's waiting on us. He's not the one holding back the blessings that he has. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done is part of what he taught us to pray. And what he said, when you pray, don't just say words, but actually do things. You know, prayer, if you cl study it closely, Jesus talked about doing more than he talked about saying or hearing. But he talked about doing. You know, he said, blessed is the one that do does these things and not just hears them. Um, and James, we read that last week in James. Uh, he said, don't, uh, you know, don't be a forgetful hearer, but be a doer also yeah I'm getting some chats here but I don't I don't see who they're from I'm trying to I'm trying to figure this out so yeah, I didn't have that problem before okay signal is choppy okay got it I just now got a couple chats okay all right well hang in there with brother Martin's working on it, it says it's a little choppy brother Martin's working on it and uh, hang in there everybody so yeah you know God bless you uh, anyway so the life of Jesus Let's read verse 11. This is one of the key scriptures, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, verse 11. It says, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. In other words, it's talking about persecution. But it says that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our mortal body. So in other words, if we live, even though there's different kinds of threats and so on, threats of death or whatever, we live for God. The life of Jesus will be manifest in our mortal body. In other words, be willing to lay down our lives for God if we need to, you know, to save our brother, to help our brother, to help the world, which we, which we are willing to do that. But it says if we are willing to do that, then the life of Jesus will be manifested in our mortal body, in our mortal flesh. And that's really where it's at. The power of God should be so strong on a child of God, on all his children, that when you walk into a room with sickness, Immediately, that's that sick person, uh, you know, starts feeling better, or at least they they notice something's going on. Uh, especially unclean spirits that are quite common too. People have seem to have mental problems. Often, that's an unclean spirit. Uh, there's been a number of, of true experiences. Brother Wigglesworth, for example, would walk into a room, and uh, he, you know, the people would just say, you know, what's going on? You know, or the or the unclean spirits would collapse the person right in front of them. And uh, you know that's, and then he, they'd get cast out. And so it's it's a pretty awesome thing, what uh, what power God's capable of. And I'm sharing. I just got this book, and it was it was one of those interesting coincidences, like Brother John was talking about last week that he had so many of. Uh, we happened to be teaching on the new creation, and about two weeks ago, or actually about four weeks ago, I ordered some books. And uh, I just ordered everything I could find by Brother Kenyon. And the one of them happened to be, when I opened the box, the one on the top was New Creation Realities. And that's, that's I'm going to share a little bit from, this, from chapter uh, 21 here. And it basically says we need to use God's substitution as if we use a bridge or an elevator. In other words, Jesus' substitution for us, his substitution sacrifice. He took our infirmities, he bore our sickness, the Bible says. So when you can use that like you do an elevator or like you do a, uh, a bridge, uh, you know, in other words, you use it to cross from one point to another, or an elevator from go from one point to another. The same thing, God's Jesus' substitution sacrifice leads us from one point to another. Uh, and I've seen it with healing a lot in our ministry. And God loves to heal people. So if anyone out there is not getting your healing, then you need to get more familiar with who you are in Christ. Because once you are fully familiar with who you are in Christ, then the unclean spirits have to go, uh, the, and, and disease has to go. Uh, usually there's unclean spirit connected with disease. Uh, not always, but most of the time. I'd say half, 90% of the time. And they have to go. Once, once you know who you are in Christ, and you start exercising that authority, that power that you have, uh, they have to, all these things have to go. All diseases have to go. Uh, I've been in very good health for many years now. I've had a few problems, but only when I get out of out of the will of God. In other words, I start doing things that I know better. You know, so <laughs> usually it's some God tells me to go somewhere and I don't go. But anyway, uh, 
I want to share that with you that we are walking in the realm of victory. If you if you know it like you know it like you know it, who we are. Um, the scripture in John, First John four four, it says, "You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." The first part there it says, "You are of God, little children." So that means that. God is our Father, and that should be a natural thing for you. We're, we're sons now of God. We read that all through First John. It says that several times, that now we are the sons of God. Not going to be, but we already are. And once you realize that in your spirit, then, and you know it like, you know, just second nature, two plus two is four, that type of thing, then it becomes natural to you. So if people...